from a, an environment where the city is used as a kind of uh, instrument of economic development for a country to an environment, uh, Brussels, where to a certain extent maybe the city is also used to propel the country into European Union uh, environment. Uh, to, up to Benoit to uh, clarify how this works. Okay, thank you, Joaquin. Thank you to Grand Tournu and the, the people who organized this uh, lecture this morning to have uh, invited me. Um, so I will, uh, let's say, introduce you to the uh, context of architecture uh, in Brussels and not really to the Belgium context. Uh, as you know, it's a very complex context. Uh, the situation are quite different uh, in Flemish city, in, in a Wallonian city in Brussels. So I will mainly focus uh, uh, on Brussels and explain you um, the situation of architecture uh, and the recent changes that have happened since uh, the beginning of uh, the years uh, 2000. I will also try, let's say, to relax a bit the debate uh, by creating connection between uh, Brussels and Turkey, because as maybe you don't know, uh, one of our famous, famous, most famous architects of the 2000s, Shefik Birkier, is now uh, building or having some important project in uh, Turkey and that creates a first, let's say, connection between uh, those uh, two lands. So, I will qu quickly go into my uh, presentation, if you can start. So, uh, to present Brussels, let's say, um, as you know, Brussels uh, has experienced in the 60s and the 70s uh, dra dramatic transformation uh, due to the uh, it's implementation of the European uh, activities, uh, European programs within the city. Uh, a lot of neighborhoods, a bit like the one you have shown, but those are central neighborhoods, those are not neighborhoods in the periphery, uh, have been destroyed to uh, accommodate uh, those new programs. Here you see a picture of the construction of the Berlaymont, which is the headquarter building of the uh, European Commission. Uh, image suivante. So those, this is another image of this uh, dramatic transformation. It's an image that represents um, the Quartier Nord, uh, the North uh, District, which is a, uh, a district that was uh, implemented during uh, 30 years. So it has lasted 30 years for its construction. And the main uh, model, or the nickname, let's say, of the project was the Projet Manhattan. So the idea was to, uh, let's say, uh, reproduce an image of an American city within the city core uh, of Brussels. Um, this is oops, on, on arrière. On arrière. Uh, this is the place, uh, the Gare du Nord, uh, that hosts now uh, the regional administration of Brussels. Um, and you see here the two first tower of what was what was called the World Trade Center of Brussels. Um, so the idea of this project was to imitate, let's say, the Twin Towers uh, of New York, uh, but uh, as it was forbidden to build higher than 100 meters uh, height, uh, they divided, let's say, not to build one tower of uh, two, 400 meters height, but to build eight towers of 50 meters height. So, this is uh, only an anecdote. If you can continue. So, this um, extremely hard uh, transformation of the city uh, in the 70s um, has had as a result, let's say, the um, uh, creation or um, uh, emergence. the uh, emergence of uh, a counter, uh, let's say, a, a movement that was opposed to, to those destructions. It's a movement, movement uh, called Le uh, Mouvement pour la Reconstruction de la Ville Européenne, so movement for the reconstruction of the uh, European city. It's a movement that has appeared uh, in the architects, art, architecture school of La Cambre uh, at the beginning of the 70s, uh, a movement which was uh, quite important during the 70s as a, a, a counter-cultural movement or a movement that was opposed um, to, the poli to the policy, uh, to the urban public policy, um, and a movement uh, that has become it's a kind of uh, official movement when the uh, uh, Brussels region was created in 1989. So the, the idea of this whole movement, and I will not go into the details of this, was to, uh, let's say, reproduce 
uh, or to take the uh, model of the pre-industrial city uh, as a model and uh, let's say to oppose to the modern city this idea uh, of, more, of, of a more traditional city based uh, on public spaces, on, uh, on the respect of the heritage, uh, on the idea also to uh, construct the city with uh, traditional materials uh, like uh, Pierre Bleu, uh, Blue Stone, which is a product that is uh, extracted here from uh, Carrière, Carriers uh, in the Eno. So this whole movement was, was structured around uh, l'Ecole d'Architecture de la Caen, but also cultural institutions like uh, les Archives d'Architecture Moderne or um, la Fondation pour l'Architecture. A quite interesting uh, element or information is that this movement, or let's say, merged with a political project uh, when the uh, region, uh, Brussels Capital Region, was created in uh, 1989. So this, um, I will not go into the detail of this, but as you know, the region, is, or the Brussels Capital Region is quite a uh, young region. Uh, when the region was created, uh, there was, let's say, a search uh, for, uh, uh, to, uh, let's say, the architects or the, the region uh, wanted to find uh, a specific aesthetic for the construction of the city. And so there was a kind of merge between the political project of creating uh, a new capital uh, city region and the idea of creating a new kind of city based on the reconstruction de la ville européenne. It is quite important because after uh, the creation of the region, for the English, um, this whole ideology of, let's say, reconstruct the city as it could have been in the 90s, in the 19th century, became the official ideology of the public uh, authorities. So um, this whole idea of, uh, let's say, recreating the city according to uh, the principle of the uh, traditional city of this 19th century uh, can be seen in a public project like this one, which is the uh, reconstruction of an area which was destroyed by the construction of the metro. And you see, let's say, a, a kind of um, friendly image uh, of a city uh, where uh, buildings are uh, implemented according to the alignment, squares are created, you can see uh, let's see uh, the dominant, dominancy of a pedestrian area and so on. So this ideology of recreating a friendly and a European city uh, was developed in public projects. It was also developed into uh, treaties or manuals uh, like this one. Um, which uh, explain to architects uh, and engineers uh, how uh, public spaces uh, had to be uh, redeveloped uh, according to uh, tr uh, traditional principles like reusing natural material, uh, recreating uh, atmospheres uh, like uh, it existed in the 19th century, so a kind of uh, way to go back in the past. Um, the ideology was well, here you see, for instance, uh, a program that has been implemented, uh, Les Chemins de la Ville, uh, between 1990s and 2005, um, which aims was to uh, create a link uh, between the uh, La Ville Haute and La Ville Basse uh, by redeveloping public spaces with a vocal uh, vocabulary uh, that is a kind of translation uh, of the spaces of, of the public space as it was in the uh, Middle Age. Going on to continue. So there were also um, in the 90s, and if you take always a look at the date, um, um, private uh, projects which were developed according to this uh, ideology. For instance, uh, La Reconstruction de la Rue de Lagne, which is uh, maybe uh, one of the first competitions that was organized in Brussels in the, at the end of the 20th century. It was organized by a uh, private developer, AG Real Estate. Who, which, uh, who, which, home, which home owned the land um, and uh, wanted to build, instead of a small skyscraper uh, that existed there, uh, a new alignment uh, of uh, housing and apartments that would, uh, let's say, uh, recreate the street as it was before the demolition uh, created by the construction of uh, the skyscraper. Um, and see, you, you, you see here also in this image the atmosphere uh, that was uh, uh, searched or looked for 
uh, uh, public space with uh, people having fun in the street, dressed uh, like in the 19th century, I would say with cars reproducing uh, model cars of uh, the late uh, 50s. Uh, and as you may know, probably this project uh, has been constructed and was, uh, has received, let's say, the uh, uh, support. The support, sorry, uh, the support of Prince Charles. So Prince Charles uh, has come to inaugurate this project, and uh, because he thought, okay, that's a great example of how the city uh, should be. So at that time, Prince Charles, uh, he had uh, strong opinions against uh, modern architecture uh, and so on. Um, so here you kind of uh, start to recognize a bit the Turkish style of architecture. Uh, it's a, a, a Ottoman uh, plaza uh, which uh, has been uh, built and designed by uh, a group of architects, Atelier Dalogman, uh, which uh, is a group of architects who, who has uh, been uh, taught during the 70s at the École d'Architecture de la Cambre and uh, who has received a lot of, uh, let's say, uh, projects at the beginning of the 90s because uh, the aesthetic of the Rousseau-Sonaville Européenne uh, had become the aesthetic, the official aesthetic of the region, let's say. So this is a private project, but which received a lot of, uh, uh, let's say, um, support. <laughs> support, sorry, Stun in Netherlands. Um, uh, support uh, by the region, and the idea was to uh, redevelop a kind of uh, front facade of uh, new offices along uh, the canal. If you want more, here you see um, a first clin uh, d'oeil, uh, Shafiq Birki. I don't know if he's really well known in Turkey or not, yes. So you see him uh, in front with a, a, a journalist from C CNN Turkey uh, explaining. Uh, to the Turkish television, what he has done uh, in Brussels. And I think maybe uh, we have to, with Christophe, we have to apologize because it's maybe because we have ejected him from Brussels that he's now building a lot in Turkey. We didn't do this on purpose. But, um, so, next. Uh, Shefik Birkier is one of the architects of the residential uh, palace in Ankara. Uh, it's quite interesting, and I don't have taken those pictures, but if you compare his drawings from the 70s, from the drawings uh, for the reconstruction of the Quartier Nord, for instance, they have quite, there are similitudes be between those drawings, drawings and these projects. So, this was more or less the situation in the 90s, in the, the beginning of the, the year 2000, uh, it's a, a, turn, a shift started. Uh, I called it the second term, the deuxième tournant, it's a hypothesis that I developed five or seven years ago, I don't remember uh, anymore. I was not sure that I was right, that there was a, a turn or a shift in urbanism, but after all these years, I think uh, I was quite right, not wrong. There has been a turn or a shift uh, in the way to produce or in the way to uh, fabricate, let's say, uh, architecture uh, in Brussels. So it's a second term because there was a first term uh, which was a term uh, that happened at the end of the 70s, when this uh, ideology of reconstruction became progressively uh, an official ideology of the public authority. So we will go into the details of this, but there is uh, the hypothesis of the second term reflects or is an hypothesis that uh, a first term happened in the 70s. So in 2008, I did this scheme uh, one night uh, at home. Uh, I was not doing a thesis or doing a research. It was a scheme that I did for myself to understand a bit what was uh, happening in Brussels. So um, I did this, let's say, in 2008, uh, because the scheme ends in 2006, so it was maybe one or two years after. And so on this, on this scheme, um, let's say, I identified uh, moments uh, and moments in the urban history uh, of Brussels. So there was, um, let's say, a first moment, the first term, which was somewhere around the end of the 70s, when uh, there was a strong uh, uh, confrontation between the modernist uh, uh, way to, to, to fabricate the city 
and let's say a new way or another way uh, which would be more respectful to the uh, traditional uh, urban fabric. So uh, a first turn happened somewhere uh, in the 70s. One of the elements that characterize, uh, let's say, the, uh, this first term is, a, let's say, to, um, a way to uh, progressively inform and consult more uh, the population and also a way to uh, respect more the uh, urban fabric. And so when I did this team in 2008, I had the feeling that something new was happening in Brussels and uh, that the ideology of the Construction de la Ville Européenne that had been predominant, uh, was being more and more uh, fragile, criticized, and that new processes were uh, progressively, uh, uh, progressively uh, developed in Brussels. New processes, of, for instance, uh, organizing public competition, inviting uh, the internal internalization, internationalization uh, of architecture, um, another way also to consider public spaces and so on. So this was more or less the hypothesis of 2008, as you want. And so this hypothesis um, was based on several elements or several uh, 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 characteristics. Um, first, uh, at the year 2000, um, maybe most of you uh, forgotten this moment, the year 2000 was an important moment for us in Brussels. Brussels was uh, a, a European capital, European cultural capital of Europe. It's an important moment because um, the cultural actors uh, at that time, um, let's say they, uh, they made it clear that they wanted to be associated to the development of the city. So, this, so the development of the city uh, was not uh, anymore to be uh, say, uh, um, a monopole of uh, architects or town planner, but also had to be uh, shared with other actors and uh, cultural actors were one of them. Suivant. Another element that was important at the beginning of the year 2000, it's the progressive uh, internationalization of the issue of Brussels as a uh, capital of Europe. So in 2001, um, Belgium, I think it's the second semester of 2001, uh, Belgium had the presidency of the European Union and uh, at that moment the Prime Minister of Belgium and the, so, uh, Giverstadt, and the President of the European Commission, Roman Romano Prodi at that time, as I remember well, asked Frank Collas to uh, produce, let's say, a report or produce some reflection on the issue of architecture of the quality of architecture of the European institution uh, uh, in Brussels. Suivant. So another element, uh, which is this uh, internalization, internationalization of architecture uh, that was since that time uh, confined or considered as something that had to be kept within the architects working and living in Brussels. Uh, it's the, uh, another element is the, the work that had been done by Joachim at that time uh, at the Berlager Institute the Brussels Manifesto, um, which in reality uh, is a continuation of the works uh, developed by Empolas. Uh, and the idea of the manifesto was to, let's say, introduce or reinforce the debate on architecture of the European institution uh, in Brussels. Suivant. Um, for the local architects, there was also uh, something that was changing at that time. It's the progressive uh, Opportunities opened by uh, the Programme Contrat de Quartier, which is uh, a public financed program of, uh, it's a regeneration program for poor uh, area, which since the year 2000 started or uh, became to be an opportunity to, let's say, for the public authorities to improve the image of poor neighborhood, but also for architects became a real opportunity to uh, receive some public uh, projects and to develop another way, let's say, also to uh, perceive or to uh, consider the city. So not only a traditional way, but a way that would more correspond to the reality and the diversity of the Brussels context. Suivant. So a lot of projects uh, have been realized between 2000 2010 by local architects and uh, reconsidering, re rewriting, let's say, uh, architecture not only as a, a, a reproduction of the past, but of, of something that would more tackle uh, the contemporary issue uh, of architecture. So it's also um, 
uh, linked to the neighborhoods uh, which were uh, um, uh, considered by those uh, contrat quartiers, which are neighborhoods which doesn't, where, where there is a lot of diversity of population, where you cannot go with the traditional uh, formula of the European city. Uh, uh, it was not possible to reproduce this model there, so architects were also obliged, let's say, to reinvent a vocabulary for those neighborhoods. So this is a, yeah, a sport facility. So you see within the, with those images that, let's say, the year 2000 were a, a moment where the, there was a great uh, critique also against the ideology of the construction de l'Europeen and an ideology that was uh, emerged, let's say, from architects from my generation, yeah, who are now, uh, I'm now 43, getting older, at that time where I was 35, I was uh, on the verge of my... <laughs> so, public spaces, those are images. Another one, another one, an important project that I want to show you is the skate park, uh, another one. Um, this project that was uh, realized uh, in 2003, 2006. It's an important project for uh, for Brussels because um, so it's a skate park, uh, but at the same time it's a public space. So it's an important project because um, the idea or the the bound of the public authorities was to create a public space that would not only be a square, in the traditional definition of a square, but also a skate park. So there is a whole. Uh, work that has been done by uh, LISCO and uh, Landscape Architects Ladizicht to, to create a kind of hybrid uh, public space that would also, uh, let's say, uh, reduce the complexity of the use of public spaces in, in the central area uh, of Brussels. And there, there is a link also to create with Istanbul uh, because this uh, uh, public space uh, has been designed by uh, Sinan Logi, uh, who is an architect or an, 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 an activist very active, I think, uh, in Istanbul. Uh, he's uh, quite known uh, in Belgium for his uh, activism in Turkey. I don't know if he's well known in Istanbul uh, or not, but he, he is one of the authors of this uh, uh, public space. So, uh, uh, no, okay. Uh, civil society movement, something very important also. A lot of work has been done during the last year 2000 um, on two occasions. Um, Centre Administrative, which was an uh, administrative uh, district that had to be uh, renovated, and uh, Place Fréget, um, interesting architects were involved in changing procedure. How can the procedure of making uh, uh, urban project can be changed? So there was a rule reflection um, uh, developed during a, 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 a workshop, MAPRAC, uh, to propose an alternative way to fabricate an urban project. Suivant. Um, Place Fréget, it's a well-known story. Suivant. It was a, a uh, project that was con suivant. project that was contested by inhabitant local association. This is the project. It looks more or less like the Gezi Park project, I think. A very uh, heterogeneous, very uh, uh, public space. Uh, um, and the competition was organized uh, by a local association, by uh, architecture school of Lacan, to uh, show to public authorities how could be how, how could the competition be organized and um, uh, and how um, uh, how should the competition be organized on public space and how um, can architects also take part in the debate uh, for uh, the renovation of public space in 2003 uh, this was 2005 I think. Um, public spaces was only uh, something that was uh, in the hands of the engineers, not of the architects. And I remember very well there were debates. The engineers they said, "Okay, why do you architects? Uh, what, why do you want to? What do you want to do with public space? Public space is only fluxus, uh, traffic, and so on. So why do you want to uh, be uh, involved in public spaces project? This is a, a project by V+. It was an uh, uh, anti-gentrification project." So anti-aesthetic, uh, and the idea was to a quite interesting project to, to put the frit cut, so the frit barrack, in the middle of the square, a small parkings around, and uh, a, a square only with asphalt and a basketball. So it was a project that was the uh, patient of let's say, having a reflection on how we how can we counter gentrification. Not at the end. 
Yeah, this, there was a um, press conference, she wrote. Okay, well, she wrote. So, in the year 2000, there were a lot of uh, activism, a lot of changes, internationalization of architecture, um, um, starting of uh, opening the debate on how should public, should, uh, public spaces be renovated, um, how can we integrate the notion of users of public space, and so on. So, you want. so at the end, there was a competition organized by public authorities in 2007, the government changed. For the first time, the landscape architect Peter Latz was in charge of a public space project um, in Brussels, Vivant, and the project was uh, realized according to the plans of, uh, um, of uh, Peter Latz, Vivant. At the end of all this, was a Vivant, the project in 2007, now being almost uh, constructed, Vivant, at the end of all this, all those movements, all those, um, let's say, criticism, all those projects, all those counter project on, okay, uh, the function of Baumeister, so the architect in charge of uh, architecture was uh, created in 2009. I think it has changed a lot uh, for us architects in Brussels that someone was finally in charge of architecture uh, in Brussels. So the situation today, I will quickly go through this. So a lot of things have happened since 2008, um, or the moment of creation of the function of Baumeister, uh, the financial crisis, of course, so the whole market of office building has collapsed, uh, but at the same time, as a new market of residential building has uh, emerged it's because of the demographic growth. So we can still see, um, so mainly today, architects, they are mainly uh, busy with residential projects, no more offices and so on. Uh, so the last project was a, a, a so, this is to show the internal, internationalization um, of the uh, Métier d'Architecte, so a project by UN Studio. Um, and the architect was, let's say, uh, the, the private developer went to search uh, UN Studio because he, 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 it was a way for him to get his building permit, you know? We have a, a star architect, you know, give us a permit to build uh, this. Uh, after 10 years of trying with local architects, Belgium, uh, local architects and so on, he went to, 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 to this architect. Next one, another way, uh, another project which, is show, which shows quite, uh, which is good, a good example of this interna internationalization and the uh, construction of the uh, up, uh, up tower, upside, upside tower, 150 meters high, the architect he wanted to, the, the private developers went to um, to, to, to search uh, Yves Lyon uh, in Paris to help him to design, let's say, the, the tower. And after uh, some moments, uh, Yves Lyon was put on the backside. And uh, Adolphe, uh, which is local architecture office, uh, realized the project. And we produced, but uh, uh, without, uh, with less quality or more, I don't know, and a similar project. Uh, in the center of Brussels, you know. Uh, this is also to, to explain that this uh, possibility to have a, a, to, make, to make architecture with contract quartier still exists today. You know. I want to end with this uh, result of the uh, creation of the Baumeister is the opening of the debate uh, on public spaces. Um, architects, landscape architects are more and more involved uh, in those kind of projects. It's a project by uh, a practice in Molenbeek image uh, the realization, uh, which is a square, shared space square uh, without parking. Now it's full of uh, television from all over the world, uh, parking their uh, antenna with their uh, satellite antenna uh, on the square. And I want to end with the two suivant, uh, with this, with this, uh, something that has appeared recently, I would say, uh, with the crisis, with the, uh, with the economic crisis, with the fact that there is less and less money, less and less public money for projects, more and more architects are involved in the way to rethink again the process of fabrication of, of uh, the city. So there is this for, for based maybe based, for instance, on this idea of commons, and there is a whole group of people with, in fact, a lot of architects, of course, uh, who are rethinking uh, how um, 25 hectares uh, ground could be urbanized uh, and 
this is, let's say, one way to uh, reinvent also uh, what is architecture today, what, uh, what can young architecture do uh, in the city. Another, another, another image I want to show you, it's the Collective PU, which is a, 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 also a group of uh, inhabitants and also a lot of architects. They want to rethink um, how can water be introduced or maintained, water management can be used and maintained in uh, public spaces. So, that's it. I've done my best to do it quickly. You are Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.